Welcome to this DASO system session dedicated to connected systems. I am Philippe Bartisol. Hello, I am Olivier Sapin. Welcome to this session about connected systems. Uh, connected systems are now part of our world. Whether you are at home, in your car, at the office, or in a manufacturing plant, they transform the way we learn, the way we buy, the way we use, the way we produce things, so designing a new connected system cannot be like designing a product. It is about thinking a new experience. Indeed, connected systems are everywhere. But how can we design and simulate connected systems so that they get a positive impact on performance? That is what we will demonstrate today. So Olivier, can you give me a simple example of a connected system, please? Well, Philip. There are plenty of examples. Our vehicles are now smart and connected. They are more and more autonomous. Uh, your car, but also the road infrastructures, um, the cities, will connect to transportation system, whether they transport goods or people. Uh, flying taxis uh, are coming. For these future transport, transportation systems, connectivity means safety to make sure uh, data is flowing from infrastructure to ve vehicle back and forth uh, to take the proactive actions. And so the same applies to uh, a vehicle in an industrial context. A truck in a mine, an AMMR, autonomous mobile robot or cobot in a plant, all are smart systems exchanging terabytes of data per day. They are common denominators between these systems. They are a mix of mechanical components, electrical, fluidic, and more and more software components. Simulating the behavior of this soft mechatronic system in the early concept phase is crucial to avoid mistakes thereafter. Well, Philip, you mentioned one of the challenges uh, of designing a good connected system, but there are many. First, as we said, you need to put consumer or workers in a plant at the heart of the experience. Uh, second, the traditional ecosystem of companies that deliver uh, this experience is changing. A tech company, for instance, are entering this ecosystem. Uh, the business model is changing from product to services. Third, the system should be autonomous. Uh, more and more, and controlled remotely, especially during and after the COVID pandemic. And last but not least, fourth, uh, compliance to regulation and standard is key uh, for better safety and interoperability with other systems. So today, companies are facing a lot of transformational challenges. One of them is the increasing amount of complexity and interfaces very complex systems in the context of larger systems with a lot of interfaces. Also, how do they improve collaboration between disciplines? What is the center point between the product manager, the system architect, the modular architect, the test architect, the manufacturing engineer, the service engineer? Not to mention the engineering disciplines, mechanical, electrical, electronic, fluidic, software and overall the project manager. Also, how can a company address cost, timing and above all quality, especially quality when they deliver and install the equipment? And finally, how do you mix your um, product twin and the real, real evidence coming from the field in a kind of DevOps uh, system. So, Olivier, how can we face all these transformational challenges? Well, uh, Philip, uh, as you mentioned, it is about transformation. Uh, transformation is key for companies who want to be competitive in the design and simulation of connected systems. Let's be pragmatic and look at five key steps to reach uh, a new level of maturity. Uh, those steps are, number one, a new approach to design, 
uh, a connected system experience. Uh, number two, the architecture of this system. Number three, the simulation of the, the system behavior. Uh, number four, the optimization of the system uh, in its own environment uh, through connectivity, like 5G. And uh, at the end, the virtual simulation of the system um, in a plant. All right, let's start from product design to experience thinking. This is step number one. Now, let's look at uh, an illustration here. Let's launch the video. Uh, in this illustration, I would like to show you a beautiful example about what it takes to create an experience. Um, here is an example of the company Miller, world-class leader when it comes to design a new experience for home appliances. We worked with their design studio to reimagine what would be the best experience to provide for their consumer. An experience is about living, interacting with human, product, services. This is a challenge we faced when we met the team of Andreas Enslin, director of the Miller Experience Center. Andreas told us, it's a nonsense to design a product without the user experience. This was the perfect playground for us to introduce our experience thinking approach uh, based on the 3D Explorer platform to optimize uh, the overall uh, design workflow and the design practices. So we worked with a mixed team of designers uh, on a, a new concept and uh, the team was composed of designers, system engineers, marketers to be able to brainstorm, to imagine, to design, to prototype in 3D a user scenario end to end. And we could see that it opened new possibilities for the, for the design department in collaboration with all disciplines. For the first time, all people could gather around the experience the final experience for the consumer, and they could see what will be this final experience. And they could make sure that very early in the concept and creative stage, they could take the right decision. So this is the kind of engagement that shows that modeling a connected system uh, is requiring a new approach. So this was a beautiful example of a B2C connected system. Let's now look at an industrial connected system. In the following video, we will look at trying to architect the, uh, um, this filling line. This is a rather complex bottling line with rinsing, filling, capping, labeling, and uh, end of line packing. Every machine is connected and the complete line has to be synchronized together. What we will start with, with the definition of customer requirements and safety or compliance requirement. You can either describe them directly in the 3D experience platform or simply import them under Word or Excel format. Then we leverage a SysML framework from requirement to solution, and we describe every stakeholder. It is very important to not to forget any stakeholder in the system description. Then we map the system itself, and we uh, simulate it uh, step by step, the logic. And then we can architect the electrical and control network with specified inputs and outputs so that later, if an electromechanical component has to be changed, all disciplines, all engineering disciplines, will understand immediately the impacts and understand what needs to be done. Thanks, Philippe. Uh, let's go to step number three then. Um, I think you greatly highlighted uh, the importance of system architecture uh, to validate the key system function and logic 
in the early phase of development. Let's launch this new illustration then uh, to talk about uh, how to do, how to simulate uh, this system. Please launch the video. So here you see again a different example, an elevator. Uh, and uh, what we want to do here is we basically apply the same approach that you just demonstrated. Uh, we have a logical architecture that can be simulated to validate the virtual twin early enough so that we can validate the specification and test the behavior of the overall system. You can see in this example uh, on the elevator that we had the complete virtual twin. You see the 3D, you see the different parameters with the simulation of each parameter, and you even see the uh, human uh, machine interface where you can basically play with uh, the virtual twin of the elevator like uh, the system will run in the real life. So this is very interesting because not only you get the control logic, but you also get the multi-physics behavior. So with such a model, including uh, mechanical, electrical, electronics, uh, software, engineering can sit down and collaborate to make the right trade-off for the final product, again, in the very early concept stage. Olivier, do you know what is this device? Uh, yes, Philippe, uh, I think it's a small cell. Um, you know, you've heard about 5G, obviously. Uh, uh, this device helps to propagate 5G connectivity uh, in a building or in a plant. Exactly. By the way, uh, this is a nice transition to the, uh, to the next uh, axis of transformation. Uh, let's look at the next illustration because we talked about 5G and connectivity. Launch the video, please. So you again, we are in a, a plant. This plant is actually producing a battery. Uh, you see the, the virtual plant uh, uh, set up. And actually, we apply the same technique of system architecture to model the overall uh, network for the plant and for the 5G small cell. So you see the virtual twin of the plant, and you see also the architecture of the 5G network and, and the small cell. Uh, we see the architecture is defined. We get the functional architecture, the logical architecture, fully developed on the expense platform. You can get the full traceability from requirements to implementation. And you can also see here that we can simulate the physics of the antenna. Uh, the, it can be simulated in 3D at the cell level but also we can see the impact of the small cell in the plant. And you see here the reach in terms of connectivity from the different small cells installed in a plant and how it is going to address the entire uh, uh, shop floor. This is where we see again the power of the virtual twin approach, the combination of architecture and 3D simulation data to design our system right the first time. This is a game changer, isn't it, Philip? Exactly, and there is one particular simulation that is very, very key, especially for the uh, machine uh, business. It is virtual commissioning, virtual commissioning of the software of the machine or the software of the line. In the following video, we can see this is the end of the line of the previous line we saw. So this is the packing uh, part of it. And we need to synchronize the robot and the conveyors. The robot itself has its own program. And we need to synchronize everything and to validate that uh, it will perform as uh, planned. We, are, uh, we can map the inputs and outputs of all pieces of equipment. We describe the system using block diagrams and ladder. And then we validate the actual program on a virtual line, verifying that connected systems accomplish, accomplishes the requested mission even before the line is installed or even before any single part is produced. Of course, we are able to accelerate or decelerate the whole system, testing at various speeds. 
why is this virtual commissioning of the uh, system application or system control application very important? Because during installation time, 50% or more than 50% of the issues that we have during the installation and commissioning and machine setup come from the uh, line software. And especially because this is right under the customer's eyes, it is at the customer's site. Thanks, Eva. That's really amazing. And let, let me ask you one final question. You know, when I see all this example, we talk a lot about the virtual twin, how to design, how to simulate one connected system. But are there several twins uh, for each step of the process? or just one that is evolving over the time? That is a very good question because we often talk about a virtual twin in general. But there are various facets of the same twin structure. You, you will have a marketing facet, a sales facet, a, a detail design facet of the twin, installation view of the twin, and most importantly, a service view of the twin or an as-maintained view. And by the way, the service field or field twin, as we can see on this picture, is probably one of the most important one because this is where we see the full value of a connected system. Because here you will be able, thanks to connected system, you will be able to achieve a very large cost savings, quality improvement, and customer satisfaction all along the uh, installation and service life. And the service life or the life of the equipment could last 20, 30, 40, 60 years. And I would like to finish with this beautiful view of an excavator, a mine excavator that is in itself a connected system as it is a complex system in itself and it is connected to all the other pieces of equipment in the mine. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.